Like their black and white Equian counterparts, the zebra, officials are the prey of the NFL. They're like an airbag. You want to know it's there, but you'd rather not see it. They're the scapegoat when things go wrong, an easy target for fans, coaches, and players, and they're often the first to catch the heat when things get ugly, whether it's fair or not. But sometimes, they deserve it. And to put it bluntly, the 2018 season has been one of those times. But why has officiating been especially poor this year in particular? And is there anything that can be done to fix it? The answers to these questions are coming up right after this. Guess what? It's a new year, and that means losing a few pounds. And in that weight loss, you might finally see your junk again. And since you're going to be so damn sexy, you're going to need to get yourself in order down there. That's where Manscaped.com comes in. Manscaped.com was just featured on Shark Tank, and it took a team of aerospace engineers to make tools that keep your junk in order. The Perfect Package 2.0 is the signature kit. It features the waterproof lawnmower 2.0 trimmer that cuts your jungle foliage down with 6,000 RPMs. This trimmer with its ceramic replaceable blades and skin safe technology really does the job. And you know what they say, when you trim down the bushes, the tree looks bigger. Legit, if you're using the same trimmer for your face and on your junk, that's disgusting. So why not get a long lasting solution for your favorite parts and ensure that cleanliness with Crop Preserver deodorant designed for the twig and berries, along with Crop Cleanser, Crop Reviver, and even Manscaped Refined, a freaking cologne for your nuts. On top of that, it's all made in the good old USA and has a 30 day guarantee so you can try Manscaped risk free. Go to the manscaped.com link below, drop in my code point20 and get 20% off and free shipping. Again, that's code point20. Act now and they'll even throw in the shed travel bag for free. Manscaped.com, number one in men's below the waist grooming. Football will never be free of mistakes and that's okay. Some of the most famous moments in NFL history happen the way they did because of questionable officiating, rule bending, or rules that don't make sense altogether. Think about the Immaculate Reception, a play that was studied as closely as a Zapruder film to see whether or not Frenchy Fuqua deflected the ball first, or if Franco Harris trapped the ball on the ground, either of which would have negated one of the most famous plays in sports history. The Patriots may not be the dynasty they are today if not for an obscure rule that turned Charles Woodson's strip sack of Tom Brady into an incomplete pass, or massive calls that affected other playoff games like Jerry Rice's clear fumble in 1998 just plays before the catch too, or Daryl Jackson's phantom push off in the first quarter of Super Bowl 40. There's even been prolonged periods of bad officiating, none more infamous than the month of replacement refs to start the 2012 season, a stretch that culminated in one of the most egregious missed calls of all time, the fail Mary in Seattle. This doesn't mean that fans have to like every call for better or worse, but rather know that human error is part of the game and that extends to the officiating crew. But at some point, error becomes incompetence, and this season, enough has become enough. <laughs> There are a couple major reasons why officiating has circled the drain and threatened to go down the toilet in 2018. The first was brought upon by a mass exodus of retirement age officials after the 2017 NFL season. Longtime trusted zebras like Jeff Triplett, Gene Sterator, Ed Hockley, and Terry McCauley, just to name a few, called it quits before the 2018 campaign, meaning that a new batch of greenhorn refs would be thrust into the spotlight all at the same time. Like the game of football itself, good officiating takes chemistry, communication, and decisiveness between a crew that can only be built through repetition. Reps that simply couldn't be built in a few short months. So exiting with the old breed were years of chemistry between officials whose expertise has now been rendered to CBS, NBC, and Fox telecasts. In came the new breed. Four new head referees, Sean Hockley, son of Ed, Alex Kemp, son of late ref Stan Kemp, Sean Smith and Clay Martin. The four new head referees marked the first time since 1960 that this many officials were promoted to the head position. In the previous five seasons before 2018, there were only eight total officials promoted to head referee. You can imagine the chaos this created, especially early on in the season. 
To be fair to officiating crews old and new, they were all dealt a difficult hand in the beginning of the season with new rules emphasizing contact initiated with the head and even more rules protecting the quarterback. So officials were tasked with enforcing rules that were new, confusing, and immediately unpopular to begin the season. Think back to all the outrage in the preseason when officials started emphasizing the new unnecessary roughness calls or early in the season when Clay Matthews hit on Kirk Cousins was deemed roughing the passer, erasing a play that would have won the Packers the game and instead resulted in a tie. It took time, but fans, coaches, and players have slowly become accustomed to the rules. Well, that or they've gradually eased up on some of the more ridiculous ones. But some calls can't be explained by inexperience or new legislation. Some calls this season have been a result of pure incompetence. Check out this play from the Chiefs Broncos Monday night game where the play clock clearly ticked down to zero before Patrick Mahomes converted a third and seven that kept their game winning drive alive. The refs admitted to their mistake, but it didn't help anyone after the fact. Or try another week four swing and a miss from the Zebras. Browns at Raiders featured a couple of huge late missed calls that swung the game in Oakland's favor. Had just one of these two plays been called correctly, a clear Derek Carr fumble prematurely blown dead and an obvious Carlos Hyde first down reversed even after review, we could be talking about the Browns in the playoffs in 2018. Of course, if you think officiating got better with time, you're dead wrong. Let's revisit a game from a couple weeks ago in the Bayou, the Saints and the Steelers. With the Saints down 3-0 in the first quarter, Drew Brees launched a deep ball to the end zone that flew over the head of everyone, including Alvin Kamara and Joe Hayden, who nearly leapt high enough to grab the ball. The official in the end zone threw a flag immediately despite little to no apparent contact from Hayden and set the Saints up at the one yard line where they quickly punched the ball in. I think we can call that ref off. Even the typically even killed Jim Nance was befuddled by the call. I, I maybe have never seen a less of a pass interference play in my life. Oh, the Saints ended up winning by just three points. Of course, this may not have even been the worst call against the Steelers this season. A few weeks earlier, against the LA Chargers in a marquee Sunday night matchup, the Steelers led 13-0 again at the end of the first quarter. With Phillip Rivers in the gun, Chargers right tackle Sam Tevy clearly moves early and causes some of the defense to freeze, waiting for the whistle to be blown for a false start. That whistle never comes and Rivers throws a bomb to Travis Benjamin for an easy touchdown that should have never happened. The difference in the game? Chargers by three. It's hard for a lot of NFL fans to find it in their hearts to feel bad for the Steelers of all teams, but there's little doubt they were on the wrong side of at least two huge mistakes late in the season. What's especially strange is that this wasn't the first time an official missed a blatant false start in 2018. In a Chargers-Browns game earlier in the season, Russell Okung clearly false started drawing groans from the crowd and causing Browns defenders to ease up. Again, Rivers threw the ball to the end zone for a touchdown, another play that should have never happened. The NFL acted this time. Down judge Hugo Cruz, who should have blown the play dead, was fired by the NFL. This was the first time the league fired an official midseason in the last half of the century, according to a report by FootballZebras.com. This unprecedented move, which the NFL says was caused by more than just one blown call from Cruz, incensed the NFL Referees Association, who said, the NFL has a troubling history of knee-jerk reactions with an eye on public relations, and clearly it has not learned from its past mistakes. Yeah, you can... Uh, yeah, okay, I'll give them that one. Unions are always going to fight for their own regardless of who's in the right, but the NFL had to eventually draw a line in the sand, and that line was Hugo Cruz. But if the missed false start in Cleveland was significant enough to be the last straw, why wasn't there similar outrage for the same blown call in Pittsburgh? Or the Phantom P.I. in New Orleans, both of which potentially swung the outcome of games, and the whole season in the case of the 2018 Pittsburgh Steelers. Ask Urinating Tree what he thinks of that.
How does this situation get fixed? The first issue of inexperience will get ironed out over time. It was an unprecedented situation for so many head referees to retire at once, and once the new guys are up to speed, expect officiating to get somewhat better. But that may not be enough if this season has been any indication. The NFL needs to continue to hold refs accountable. Coaches and players are on a short leash because they're performing on the biggest stage sports has to offer, so it only makes sense that officials should be held to the same kind of standard. When a quarterback can't stop turning the ball over or a coach can't win a game, they get the boot. At what point do individual officials or officiating crews start to receive the same scrutiny? Officiating can't become like teaching where a certain number of years grants you tenure or a seat on the Supreme Court that's good for life. It needs to be as competitive as the game itself and only the most competent and consistent officials should qualify for the National Football League. Unions might be necessary in certain situations, but it's in their nature to act irrationally on the side of officials. And the NFL needs to be able to flex their muscles when a problem needs solving officiating will never be perfect and that's not what fans are asking everyone just wants competence and accountability and until that happens nfl officials just like real zebras will always have those black and white targets on their backs well i hope you enjoyed this video please don't forget to check out manscape.com and use my code point 20 and get 20 percent off your first order i'm five points vids and you officially made it to the end of this video